All right. I think it's finally time to address the uh, elephant in the room. Welcome back to Craft Computing. As always, I'm Jeff. Now, I can't lie. As much as I'm a gamer and hardware enthusiast, I have a genuine soft spot for professional gear. I love a good 1440p, 144Hz ultrawide as much as the next guy. But a monitor that is just color accurate and precise as possible makes me smile just thinking about it. With my channel continuing to grow, I figured it was about time to upgrade my editing monitor. And I figured, go big or go home, right? My previous workstation monitor was an HP ZR2740W. It's a 27 inch 2560 by 1440 LED backlit IPS panel. It has 380 nit brightness and 1001 contrast ratio. While it worked well for providing a decent amount of screen real estate, it didn't come without some serious drawbacks even when I bought the thing eight years ago. It has a 12 millisecond response time, subpar color accuracy for other IPS panels, and zero on-screen display for image adjustment of any kind. It also has some, by modern standards, terribly out-of-date connectivity options. It was time to move on. This behind me is the LG 43UD79B. On the surface, it's a 43-inch 4K monitor, or what most people would consider to be a TV. But it goes far deeper than that. It is a 4K panel rocking a resolution of 3840 by 2160 and a 60 Hz refresh rate. It's an IPS panel that provides superb viewing angles and that thin bezel gives the panel an even more premium feel. What isn't obvious is how excellent this monitor is for productivity and content creation. As anyone who's ever had two monitors will tell you, once you've had two monitors on your desk, you'll never ever go back to using a single one. Unless you get one of these. In the case of the LG 43, it actually provides the same size and pixel density as four 21 and a half inch 1080p monitors. All that without the hassle of bezels getting in your way. And you're not limited to a 21 and a half inch full screen either. In this case, I've got superposition running behind me in the full 43 inch 4K mode. For productivity use, I use the Windows key plus an arrow direction to snap the windows to any quadrant that I need them in. If you need more options to divide your screen, LG includes a handy bit of software called on-screen control that lets you snap windows in any arrangement you need. A big reason for this monitor purchase was for color accuracy improvements. My old HP monitor just wasn't holding up for the higher bit rates that I've been recording in as of late, and I was running out of screen real estate when editing video. I don't have room on my desk for dual 27 inch panels in the current arrangement, and I'd likely still be struggling for space if I opted to go with dual 24s. The 43UD79 is by no means perfect for color reproduction, but it is factory calibrated and more than enough for a budding content creator like myself. If you're aiming for more professional color accuracy, those screens start at about $1,200 and go way up from there. But at a price point of just $580, the LG sits in a price range that is competitive with most 27 and 32 inch professionally minded entry level monitors out there. One of my favorite features of the LG 43 is likely the input variety. LG spared no expense on the underside of the screen with six separate inputs. Two HDMI 2.0s with support for up to 4K 60 Hertz, two HDMI 1.4s with support for 4K 30, a DisplayPort version 1.2, and USB-C with DisplayPort, both of which also support 4K 60 Hz. For someone like me who is constantly swapping out systems, either for testing or to use, I do play games here too. <laughs> Not needing to unplug a device every time I need to switch inputs is awesome, but it gets better than that. This monitor also supports input splitting and picture-in-picture -picture modes. You can hook up multiple machines to this monitor and use them all at the same time. For example, nothing stopping me from hooking up that Raspberry Pi based emulation system I built a few weeks back and playing games while my main rig is rendering a video or making a benchmark run on one machine while surfing Reddit on the other. This monitor isn't just a multitasker's dream, it's a multi-system owner's dream as well. Then there's the content consumption portion of this review. Watching 4K videos and playing games on this panel is amazing. The blacks are fantastic, the backlighting is very smooth and uniform across the entire image and there's no noticeable edge bleed. There is one issue with the size and it's one you're not going to expect. That's at the very edge of the image isn't sharp. It's more apparent with lighter colors, but it's because of the angle you're viewing this panel, you can see the bezel frame behind the image. It's only the last one or two millimeters, but it does cause the edge of the image to be very soft and it is something worth noting. Gaming performance is much improved over my previous HP monitor. Now, to be fair to both, neither of these are gaming panels. <laughs> But LG does claim a five millisecond response time and gray to gray time. And playing games, I did not notice any significant input delay at any tested resolution, be it at 1080p, 1440, or native 4K. What was a huge negative was screen tearing. On a 21 inch monitor, the occasional tear isn't that big of a deal or even noticeable to some people. 
On a monitor this large though, and one that isn't tuned for variable refresh rates, the tearing is huge, uneven, and distracting as hell. If you plan on gaming with this screen, you're gonna wanna have VSync enabled at all times on every game, as anything other than a steady and consistent 60 FPS is almost unplayable. Resolution scaling was a bit of a surprise here, as 3840 by 2160 is just double the dimensions of 1080p, you'd expect nearly perfect scaling with 4 pixels to 1 pixel, but you'd be wrong. 1080p winds up with a bunch of soft edges and abrupt jagged lines. 1440p on the other hand winds up looking rather sharp on this panel. Very odd and not the result that I expected. I haven't mentioned the included monitor stand yet, primarily because I only used it for three days before I broke down and had to wall mount this panel. My desks are 24 inches deep, but that still did not get me comfortably far enough away from this massive screen. Plus with no height adjustment, it wasn't doing itself any favors as far as usability. There is a 200x200 200 200 vest mount on the rear, but finding a freestanding or gas piston arm that can support a 27 pound monitor is a bit of a tall order. At the end of the day, am I satisfied with my purchase? I view the 43 UD79 as a very odd middle ground when it comes to monitors. On one hand, it's a bargain for a factory color calibrated monitor, but does cost more than similarly specced 27 and 32 inch models with similar features. It supports more inputs than most TVs, including DisplayPort and USB-C, but costs a few hundred dollars more than similar 43 inch 4K TVs. It is a true 4K monitor, but the DPI is identical to that of a 21 inch 1080p screen, which after years of using a 27 inch 1440p does feel like a bit of a step back for me. The stand is subpar, image scaling isn't great, screen tearing is a major issue in games, and the DPI isn't as high as it could be here. But the screen size is tremendous, even if it does take a bit of getting used to. The contrast and color are fantastic right out of the box, and the flexibility of inputs is second to none. I am very satisfied with this purchase at $580. Monitors are always full of promised specs and compromises, and unless you're willing to shell out upwards of $1,300, you'll likely miss out on at least one feature that you were looking for. But for a 43-inch 4K monitor that looks this good, is no fuss to set up, not including wall mounting it, provides this much real estate and can do it for this cost, I think this monitor is the perfect middle ground for many different requirements and only has a few very acceptable compromises. Make sure to like this video if you liked it, subscribe if I'm interesting to you, or if you've had enough to drink that I became interesting to you. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing for my latest shenanigans, and hit me up on Patreon if you'd like to financially support this channel and videos like this. Make sure to tune in every Wednesday at 8pm Pacific for Talking Heads, the live show with the latest in beer and tech news. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm gonna go slather some aloe vera on my sunburnt neck and arms and legs and the tops of my feet because I went barefoot through a very fun Memorial Day weekend. Hope you guys had the same fun without getting sunburnt and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers guys.